And there's only one solution, and it's not pretty. Now, everyone is going to take what I say next out of context. I'm going to tell you that up front. And I'm only going to presage this by saying that many of my most influential intellectual mentors have been women. All right? So I'm going to put that out up front. I'm talking in generalities. The only way to save the West at the moment is to change our perspective of the majority of women when it comes to defending society. Look, you're not a father, but if you were a father and your child was wandering onto the road, would you say, ah, oh, he'll learn his lesson? No, of course not. I would uh, run. You'd scoop say, him up. Uh, yeah, you'd scoop him up and say, he's a child. You can't let consequences accrue to children because they know not what they do, right? How experienced are women in war? How experienced are women in intertribal conflicts? How experienced are women in general in the political system? I'm talking about the sum total of human evolution as opposed to the last 80 or 60 years or whatever, right? And the answer is almost none. They have almost no experience in defense, almost no experience in any of these things, right? So when it comes to things like national defense, women are children. Because the question is, for a lot of European men, and it's not just in Europe, because they say, ladies, you shit on us for two generations or let other women do it without much protest. So you get what's coming to you. We're not going to protect you. Reap what you sow. Enjoy your new overlords. Right? You've heard these uh, sentiments, right? Yeah. Right. Which is like saying to your child, well, you wandered into traffic. Enjoy being dead. Well, that's not good parenting, right? And when it comes to things like national defense and protecting civilization from barbarism women are children there are other areas where women are fantastic and men are like children but this particular area which is kind of the important one at the moment women are children and if we say to the child who's grabbing the big pot of boiling water oh the third degree burns will teach him a lesson that's bad parenting and letting women warble on about multiculturalism and compatibility and national defense and borders and war and guns and conf I mean, it's like listening to a three-year-old tell the plot of Star Wars. They may make some funny sounds, but they're not at war. So for European men to say, well, we'll just let the negative consequences accrue to European women and serves them right. Well, first of all, European men don't get to exist independently of European women. And if Europe goes down, it's not like the men are going to be free. But the only way that I can think that men might rouse themselves to the defense is to say, well, boys, let's, let's reason together. Let's grab a couple of testicles, shove them under a round table, and talk frankly to each other, for the hour is growing late. Boys, we made a big mistake in the West. We really did. It's terrible. We listen to women about war. We listen to women about defense. We listen to women about danger. We let the sentimentality of women overcome the multi-millennia hard-won experience of men who actually have to go to battle. Oops! We kind of let that one get away with us. You know, we wanted to please women, you know, we're Western men, so we survive because we're K-selected. We have to please women because women got to stay around to raise our kids who are more complex and need more nurturing and more parenting. And so we're, you know, we naturally have this bend towards pleasing our women. And this is what the women say they wanted. And we gave them the vote and they got took over the state and they got the welfare state and they got all this free stuff because women pay much less in taxes than men do. So for them, it was a whole bunch of free stuff and they kind of went nuts like fat kids in a candy store and... We kind of let the whole thing just get away. You know, we didn't, we didn't listen to those libertarians who said you need a smaller state. We didn't listen to those anarchists who said you need no state. We didn't listen to all these people. We were inattentive in guarding the hard-won cathedrals of freedom founded on the blood of our ancestors. We kind of let women run away with it. We let our kids wander near the street. Whose fault is that? It's, Gently, it's the parents. The men. Yeah. Now, this takes a certain amount of nutting up that is hard for most men to even conceive of. And it takes a certain perspective. Listen, women are wonderful. Women are fantastic. There's nothing to do negative towards women. But women are not biologically equipped in any animal species where there is inter intraspecies predation. The females do not guard the tribe. 
it's the men, it's the male monkeys who circle the tribe and, and the women are focused on raising the kids, gossiping and picking nits out of each other's ass. Worst porn ever. So as men, you know, because we like to please women, we kind of let civilization get away from us just a little bit. And like women, because we're raised by women, we became frightened of bad words. We let women, voters, choose security over freedom because mm -hmm. women are programmed to choose security over freedom because children men are programmed to choose risk over security because risk has the potential within it of gaining more resources with which to get a more attractive healthier better mother for your children this is why men spread widely over the iq spectrum and women don't as camille pallia said the reason why there are no female mozarts is because there are no female jack the rippers because men prefer risk to security. Because risk has the concomitant or associated rewards of having massive amounts of resources with which you can spread your seed. You know, which is why Genghis Khan, well, he went out from time to time. <laughs> yeah. And women prefer security to liberty. And these things are great. All risk is bad. All security is bad. All risk is chaos. All security is stagnation. And because we still have yet to learn the lesson that the government will always destroy society, men gave women the vote. And historically, the moment that men could, they did. Men gave women the vote. Women voted for security over freedom. The women lacked the resources to understand the basic math of debt and unfunded liabilities and just grabbed and grabbed and consumed and consumed. And society stands in a, at a precipice. Is it the fault of women? No. You give kids lots of candy, they're going to eat lots of candy. Do they care about diabetes and toxic liver and tooth decay and obesity? No. Tastes good. Right? And we gave women lots of free stuff because we gave them Massive benefits with no draft and no requirement that they cover it through taxation. Free stuff. Free stuff. You know, you shake a billion dollars worth of hundred dollar bills over a poor neighborhood. Is everyone then a thief? Yeah. Not really. So the wealth that accumulated and survived the wars accumulated through the first industrial revolution and survived the, the two world wars. The wealth that was accumulated was handed out to women. Why? Because women wanted the vote and Western men care about being sexist. <laughs> Our downfall. <laughs> I mean, you know, go to the Middle East and you people are sexist. Yep. It's right there in the Quran. Men and women are different, and men should be in charge. And we wanted to, to, to please women. Women say, we want the vote, we give them the vote. Because if you say no, women shouldn't have the vote, or we should not have a vote, or we should not have a government. Women won't fuck you. And your genes die out. So all of the non-pleasing genes in the West died out, because Western men don't dominate their women the way that most other cultures do.